Sir, we're approaching a podcast. It's part of the Legion Academy Collective called Dice Time. That's it. Bob Swaim and Ben Jetrin are there. Uh, my lord, there are several Star Wars Legion podcasts. It, it could be any number- That is the one. Admiral, set your course for Dice Time. Hello and welcome to Dice Time. I'm Bob Swaim. And I'm Ben Jetrin, and we are coming to you live from the Donkatu Cantina. Yeah, we we're not at the undisclosed location this time, so there you go. We are real people. How's it going, Ben? It's good. Cantina's been nice, and yeah, uh, it's been everything's been going pretty well in general. So good deal. So uh, this nice. episode, we're we're, we're going to give you some of our Star Wars experiences, not from the game. We're going to still talk about the game, of course, um, but we're going to talk about a couple of trips that he, both of us have made separately. Of course, he's got a story. I've got a story. Everybody's got a story, um, including Brad Moore, which is going to be the interview that we'll be uh, throwing in here in the middle between our stories. And uh, he gave us uh, some good insight on how he plays and why he plays Empire and uh, Separatists. So that'll be coming up here in just a bit. But uh, I think I'm going to start with my, my Florida story, if you don't mind, Ben. Well, don't forget the other thing. We're going to uh, we're going to be touching on arcs as well. Oh yeah, arcs. I, I, arcs. That was, was the thing day. you were so excited to talk about it last time. And yeah, yeah, yeah. That's an everyday occurrence, man. And we got some stories with that too. <laughs> Not a lot of experience playing them or against them, but uh, we got a little bit to start with. There's a lot of floating around about it. There's, There's a lot a, of discussion to be had. There's a lot of yakking. We'll, we'll don't see let if we me. Can, uh, we can quell some of that down. And don't let me forget this bounty on this table is for Brad Moore. Yeah, yeah, we're, we're gonna we're gonna beat that out, beat beat the information out of him, and then take him in and, and have a payday, because you're running up a tab here, and, and it's on my card, and I don't appreciate it. So there it's you gonna go. Be, it's gonna be sweet. Yeah, All right, Bob, go fun. ahead and go ahead and uh, take it away. My best friend in the world, Mike, called me up. Wow, one day. thanks. <laughs> yes, you're you're, you're, <laughs> you're up there. You haven't taken me to Florida, so there you go. Great start. Great called start. me up, and he 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 decides, hey, you want to go to Florida? And I'm like, yeah. And he goes, we're only going for two days. And I'm like, oh. Okay, what are we going to do? We're going to Disneyland. We're going to fly the Falcon. And I'm like, oh, 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 I'm so in. I don't care. Um, we left on a Sunday around 5 in the morning. And we got down there about 9, 30, 10 o'clock. Walked into the park. Now, I'm diabetic. I'm old. I haven't ate since 3 o'clock in the morning. So I'm already not feeling this at all. I'm so excited to be there. And the first ride that we get to is the Star Tours ride, which if any of you have rode it, you know it's kind of bumpy. It's 3PO and R2 and a droid named Rex. Um, Because I love Rex, and I'm like, that doesn't look like Rex. Um, He takes you on a wild tour through the galaxy and brings you back, and it just shakes you up like like a soda pop. And uh, almost got sick there, so went and got something to eat. Um, When you walk into the exhibit down there, um, it's Black Spire from the books. It's amazingly beautiful because you walk through this tunnel and it's dark. And when you come out the other side, it's it's Batu or uh, Black Spire. Batu is a planet, I think. But anyway, it's Black Spire and there's A wings. We got to see an actual A wing if or uh, setting there. We walked by the blue uh, the blue X wing. That was in the Mandalorian. A uh, quick story on that one. If you've watched the 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 behind the scenes of the Mandalorian, they the 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 the, there was a joke going between the guys that were directing that they, they were going to get an X-Wing. Well, they didn't have one in Hollywood. So this this model was being shipped to Disney down in, in, in Florida where we were. And this model that sets down in the park is one that Dave Filoni sat in. And then the other two directors, I forget their names, when they uh, on the episode where they blew up the uh, space station. Yeah. When they, and it was amazingly cool just to walk by. We didn't know it at the time, um, but we, we got to see that up close. So we get to the Falcon, and I can tell you right now, it's amazing. You walk around this corner, you go through the shops, which are really, really cool, and you come out the other side, and there's the Falcon. It's full size, big big as anything, and we got in the line. They told us it was going to be 90 minutes on the line. So we're like, oh, man, this is going to be forever because it's, it's warm. We went in January, but it's still it's warm down there. Um, we're going through the line and it's just amazing the amount of detail that they put into this Falcon, the landing gear, the, the crates and boxes and stuff. It makes you really feel that you're walking around the Falcon on a movie set. The very coolest thing about the line, and you, you don't hear this very often, is they had a drink station in the middle of the line 
So yeah. we're we're walking through the line. We're like, God, I wish I had a drink. God, we can't get out of this line. You know, blah 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 blah. And uh, it was totally amazingly cool because they had pop and water, and we bought pops and water, and we were walking through. Well, when you enter the building, you get to go up a ramp, and you can see the Falcon from the top. So you can see the cockpit, you can see the guns, you can see all the cool stuff. Hondo Anaka starts talking in the background and you're like why is he even doing anything here what, what's that and it's basically a spaceport where he's running an illicit trade business to where he steals stuff and then sells it the whole premise of the entire ride is you're working for him chewbacca has loaned him the falcon to do a run and uh you're basically have been hired to be pilots so you actually they have an animatronic of him and it's just amazing it looks real it looks just like look like he's standing there we ended up going up to that got up there and i wanted to fly so bad and so did mike we went up and everybody that was the that worked there we told them hey we we need pilot tickets oh you got to talk to the next guy hey you got to talk to the next guy we get into where they're handing out tickets and we're like we want to be pilots we're willing to wait they stick us in a corner for about five minutes the cool thing about that is you're inside the falcon so the deteric table is there the the first aid station where when Luke got his hand cut off and they pulled him in at, at Cloud City, that station is there. I think, uh, but it's really cool. They, and then you're like, I could wait here for an hour. Yeah, it was really <laughs> cool. Honestly, we were just getting ready to sit down at the table and they called us. And so we walked over. I took a picture of my, my pilot ticket and uh, you, they stand you in front of the door and the door slides open and there's the cockpit. And you're looking at it and you're going, okay, there's six seats here. There's only supposed to be four. And we walk into it. I look at Mike and we both just have the biggest grins on our face because this this is Mecca for us. We're, we're, we're going to get to fly the Falcon. Yeah. I sit down on the left. He sits down on the right. So I'm in solo seat. He's in Chewbacca seat. And that's the way it always is. He's my Chewbacca. He's, he's about 6'3 yeah. and, and, and stuff and shaggy and, and I'm, I'm – I don't look anything like console. I look like Rex. But anyway, so we sat down and we're familiarizing with the things. And I'm I'm in charge of going left and right. He's in charge of going up and down. So we get in our seats. The people pile in behind us. We don't even know what they're doing. We're not paying them attention because we're sitting in the Falcon. We're looking out that cockpit. And we're just like, oh, God, we could die today. And it, this would be cool. You know, got to see my grandkids, married the woman of my dreams, got to fly the Falcon. It's It's all good. Hondo comes on the thing and he tells you, basically, you're going to take and fly the Falcon through this, this, this trench on this world, and you're going to be trying to steal some, some fuel, the fuel from uh, Solo. And the guys, your, your engineers have, have uh, basically big magnet magnets on sticks or on strings. Um, and then you have two, two gunners in the back that are going to keep the TIE fighters off of you. So when it lifts off, it feels the whole thing moves. And, and it feels like you're doing when you turn left, the whole thing turns left and right and up and down. So we get up and he goes, okay, it's time to go to hyperspace. The coordinates are already in the nav computer. So we punch the button and the thing lurches just like in the movie. It, it goes up and you come out of hyperspace. It drops just like in the movie. It's, it's just like you're in space. The, the movie that's playing in front of you is realistic. Oh yeah. Drop it. You drop into the trench. You fire. You're flying left and right and screaming at your partner. You know, up, down, left, right, up, down. You know, and he's yelling left and right back, <laughs> and the guys in the back are screaming about shooting the guns and this and that. <laughs> and we ended up going through the tunnel or through the trench, and it was amazing. The flying was awesome. I think I've only hit one thing. We ended up getting to the end of it and pulling up at the right time, and we got actually out of there. You go up through the atmosphere, and it turns black, which is the most amazingly thing, cool thing. Um, makes you want to be an astronaut and see it for real. Um, and it shakes and does all the fun. So the Falcon is an old machine, and it shakes and it rattles, and it sounds about like my car. And we Yeah, that's basically what it's supposed to be. Especially. It's supposed to be. It's, it's exactly everything that you're going to think that the Falcon should be. And you hit you hit the, the, the out of the atmosphere into the space, and you you. This was the best part for me because, like I said, I've got my best friend. We're flying the Falcon together. He's in Chewie's seat. I'm in Han's seat, and it's like, okay, time to bring the the, the load home. Uh, go to hyperspace. And on Mike's side of the thing, the, the there was the sticks basically that they pushed up to go to hyperspace. Yep. So when he says that, we both reach over. I grab the two on the left. He grabs the two on the right, and we both push at the same time. Well, his are the only ones that work. Mine go nowhere. They're they're screwed into the, the board, so they don't move. So I'm pushing on him, and he's like pushing him, and we jump to hyperspace. The ship lurches, 
We get back, we land it, it hits the ground and it shakes and we climb out and we got pirate ratings, which is the, the, the second to the highest. Uh, they missed a container or something and, and we didn't get, we didn't get a, we didn't get captains, uh, things, but we did get pirates, which was second best, which made me really happy for the first time we flew it. Um, weirdly enough, we only flew it once. That was, that's what we did that day. We were all really tired. So we walked around and looked around and it was, but it was amazing to fly the Falcon. It was just totally freaking cool. Highly recommend it to anybody who's, who's a big Star Wars fan. Um, we spent the rest of the day just walking around the uh, Black Spire. Um, it's really. And you were a, pirates. We were pirates. It, you walked around being pirates. It's a culture there because if you talk to the people from Disney that are working and you say good, good, good morning, and you don't say good morning, but you say, say bright suns. They'll talk to you. They'll treat you like one of the locals. Yeah, um, I, I love that so much. I happen to have a Rebel shirt on. It was green with a black Rebel logo underneath it. And I, I've got a Rebel hat that I wear all the time. And I, when I, I, I said, you know, you know, high suns or good moons or whatever was going on at the time, the lady kind of leaned in on me and she looked around and goes, you got Rebels are doing a great job. Keep it up. You know, and I'm like, oh. Well, we're really starting this resistance here. You, you should look up, you know, and see if you can find some of our people. They probably hire you, you know, for intel. And and you know, you you get to pull role play with them. Yeah, and that's so. I ev- love that so much. It's everybody. The bad thing is you cannot wear costumes. I and know that's the because, saddest thing is because like well, as as somebody who has a cosplay, I was really looking forward to like, man, with all the people role playing, I would love to go dressed like a grand admiral and see what happens oh yeah they they, they, they would take you in the back room and beat you with 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 the yeah, fake lightsabers and what, they, and what would happen is i would approach and they would be like uh nope that is not allowed goodbye that's, and yeah, i'd be like they, well they, 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 okay it's i cool guess i can dress like a jedi no you can't dress like a jedi either what? they they sell robes there and yeah, uh, they, you can't wear them they they put them in a bag and staple them basically to oh, where you that's can't so wear weird them. i thought i thought it was like yeah you could wear like something that looked like jedi robes when we were there they said they said you couldn't you can't do anything Uh, we walked around like i said there was a wings and and ships and speeders and it just immersed you into um we didn't make it into um rise of the 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 first order or whatever the new ride was uh the wait on it was like days so we didn't make it into that we're going to do that the next trip i guess they're opening a hotel that that is right inside that. Yeah, park. I, I heard about that. I'm really so, excited for that. That's the experience. It's. I think Mike said it was. It was two or three grand though for for four days. I think so. It's it's going to be a saving. Save yeah. save for a while to go again. Um, it was awesome. That was the greatest day ever. Got to fly the Falcon. Fulfilled my dream. Didn't think we were going to do anything else better. Um, second day we got up. We both went back and just died. We were both just terribly tired because we flew in. We, we went to the park. We, we got to fly the Falcon. We walked around all over the place, went back to the hotel, died. They had an R2 unit in our, the, 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 the hallway in our uh, hotel. So you get to walk by it. It was really cool. It didn't beep, didn't do anything. It was broken down. It was old and rusty. It was kind of cool looking. Um, like you. But, yeah, kind of like me. The next day, we, we, we actually went into actual Disney World, which I'm not going to dog on Disney World or land or whatever it is disney proper and uh it wasn't it wasn't much fun we'd wish that we honestly went back to to star wars land and just walked around and maybe flew the falcon again but it was kind of cool my father had taken me there when i was a kid and i'd taken my kids there so i was walking through reminiscing of stuff we went to tomorrowland and went through that and saw some cool stuff there so about four or five o'clock because i'm an old guy um, I got tired. I was like, man, you want to go back to the hotel for a little bit and take a crash and then maybe go do something else? Well, they have a thing called Disney Springs. It's a bunch of restaurants and you walk around there. So I was sleeping and, and Mike come over and kicked my bunk and he's like, we're going to Disney Springs. And I'm like, okay, you want to do something else, Star Wars? And I'm like, well, duh, that's the only reason you know we came down here. And right. uh, so he found this thing and I, I, it just escapes me the name of the actual place, but it was a VR place. So we end up getting there, and he says, like, I made reservations already. We're going. I'm like, okay, cool. So we get there, and I'm figuring VR, you know, you stand in one spot, and you do all the actions and do all that stuff. And uh, no, this was completely different. We walked in. They basically put us in laser tag gear and these big bulky helmets. And they're like, okay, so you're going to be walking through these rooms. And we're like, okay, that's kind of cool. And she's like, yeah. The cool part was the lady that was was our guide basically looked like Mara Jade, little little redheaded girl, very mm-hmm. pretty, had on the black uniform and everything. And I'm like, oh, you look like Mara Jade. And she's like, who? And I'm like, oh, oh, sweetheart. Yeah. 
you, well, you, you, you need careful. to read your lore. Yeah, because you look like her exactly. You look, the thing fires up, it goes black for a second, and it opens up, and Cassie and Andor is giving us orders on what we're doing. We're rebels. But we're going into a, a imperial place, and we're supposed to look, find this box. And he doesn't know what's in the box, but we're supposed to find the box, and the pilot will help us that's going to fly us there. So he gets uh, it starts shooting because he's on the comm links and he's telling us what to do and you hear the shooting and he's like I got to go you know and we're like okay fine, so we walk in, she says okay put your visors back down, and and go ahead and have a seat, and we we sit down and there's actually a seat there because we got our visors down we can't really see it looks like the inside of a ship, so we sat down and there's seats there and I raise my hands up, and I've got stormtrooper armor on my arms and my my hands. And I look over at Mike, and he's got stormtrooper armor on because Mike's not there. There's a stormtrooper, this six foot five, three, yeah. whatever he is, stormtrooper standing. And I look over, and a couple other guys who was in our group, I don't know who they were, but here's these little fat short stormtroopers over here. And I, I had to say it, you know, you're a little short to be a stormtrooper. And, mm-hmm. and, and so we sit down. Well, K2SO comes in, and he gives us our mission, and he's going with us. So the the pilot climbs into the top of the, of, of the ship and he's talking to us and we're like, when do we get guns? We want guns. We're not going yeah, into right. an imperial installation without guns. Oh, here we go. And about that time, the front of the ship opens up to where we can see where we are and we're coming down through this black fog and we break the black fog and we start seeing lava pits. And we're like, oh, no, we're on Mustafar. And in the distance, you can see Vader's castle. And I'm like, oh, no, we, we don't want to wake him up. <laughs> and and he starts handing us guns, and it comes across the radio. Your, your, your code does not match the code for that ship. You are going to be boarded. Any resistance will get you killed. So we're like, oh. So he puts the guns back in the rack, and we're like, okay, so we're going in. The door opens, and this was the most amazing part of the whole thing, the sulfur smell hit you in the face. The actual the hot, smell? The smell. The oh. hot air hits you in the face. And uh, it's just amazingly cool because it hits you. So they take you across this little bridge, which I got vertigo going across. They drag us, drag me across there. Um, we get into the room, and they take us into this, this room, and we're waiting to see what's going to happen, and there's guns on the wall. So, of course, I'm grabbing guns, and, and they're actually there, physical heavy guns. And I hand them off to the guys. So we're running down the hall. We're blasting everything that moves. I found the secret to stormtrooper guns. If you aim to the right, everyone if, pay sorry, attention. Everyone pay if attention. You, if you aim to the left, like like a half an inch, it shoots straight. So I'm screaming at the guys to do this, and we're all hitting Ooh. everything we do. So we get in the elevator. They're punching the codes in. The thing broke down like three times while we were in it. I'm not going to go into it, but we got to do it three times for free, basically. <laughs> um, we get in the elevator. We get out on the thing. We're shooting these lava monster things out there and stormtroopers left and right. That goes on for about. 10 or 15 minutes we get back in we get up on this ledge and here comes the pilot and he's like the box is over here and we're, we're looking and he's up on this big you know because all imperial installments or installations have have uh, walkways up walkways. in the air that don't go anywhere he's yeah. up on there he opens the box he pulls out this sword and we're looking like, oh that what what that's a sword why do they have a sword here and he hits a button and it's a lightsaber with two blades on on each side oh and we're like oh this is cool and then we hear it <sighs> And we're like, oh God, somebody woke Vader up. And he starts just his in his monotone voice of telling us what he's gonna do to us and how we're not getting out of here alive. And 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 of course the pilot's smart mouth and you're like, Oh yeah, I got this. What are you gonna do about that? And he throws his lightsaber at him and kills him. Yeah, I was gonna well, say, you don't you like, don't you don't sass Vader. Okay. You learn so that in, lesson real fast. In this moment, we we lose all sense of that we're stormtroopers and we're like, shoot him. So yeah. we start shooting Vader. So he's knocking stuff back at us. We're feeling every hit that hits us. You can feel it in the armor. Man, that's so intense. And, and the heat and all the stuff. And about the time the wall breaks in, and there's K2SO in the ship saying, come with me if you want to live. So he terminated us. It was kind of funny. <laughs> so we climb in the ship, and he takes us back. And, and we, we give him the intel, and it's over. But it was so real. It was so real when that door opened, and you could smell the sulfur. And and that was the second day, and and we got up the next morning, and we we came back to, to Indiana and our, our our real lives. But if you can go, make sure when when all this COVID crap is over and they open everything back up, definitely it's it's a good trip to take. Flying the Falcon is a great. I would absolutely love to go, Bob. I've been dying ever since I knew that they were making it. I was like, I have to go, but I just haven't had the money or the time. I would love. I can I could make the time. 
I don't I need the money. But I can make it I'm gonna make it happen. One one of these days. One of that, these days, I hope hopefully soon, because I would love to do it. It sounds so much fun. Right. Mike and I are light lightsaber aficionados, and the only thing I could say was the the lightsabers that they sell down there are are kind of cheap. We buy a we buy ultra. Oh, stuff. that's not right. But but I mean, if you're going to put it on the wall or if you're just going to tap stuff, it's kind of cool. We we actually yeah. do physical combat with ours, but they're nice looking. The stores are beautiful. Florida is amazingly cool, and that's that's my Florida trip. But if you get a chance, go fly the Falcon. Dude, you know I'm going to do it. In fact, let me know when you go next, and maybe I can make it line up or something. Well, Bob, I don't know about you, but the Donka 2 Cantina has treated me pretty fairly tonight. It has me, too. They have the best drinks here on this side of the planet, and the tables have been awesome. I've won a lot of money. I'm really happy. But uh, despite all that, I don't want us to forget why we came here. Right. That bounty. Correct. Not just any bounty. The bounty. Uh, I'm looking over the dossier here. It says Brad Moore, human. Uh, known conscriptor with the Separatists during the Clone Wars, and he looks like he joined the Imperials afterwards. What a piece of scum. And my greatest rival. Yeah, yeah I don't I don't think he sees you as a rival. I, I've, I've heard about your guys' encounters, and it's kind of like you poke a bantha or, or, or a, a rank or either one with a sharp stick, and then it just kind of runs you over every time, and you bleed a lot. And my greatest rival well all right let's let's not start a fight here like the last time you remember the last time that took all our winnings to pay for all the mess that you made let's just keep your blaster under the table all right anyway brad should be coming through that door any moment now and when he does we're gonna have a little chat with him okay hopefully it doesn't get get too messy again money you cost us money last time i get it i get you you see? There he is. Okay, slow down. Keep your blaster lowered. Don't want to cause a scene. We don't have to. I got it. Yeah, we're good. We're good. Well, 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 Brad Moore. Didn't expect to find us here, now did you? Brad, I'm, I'm going to be honest. He's going to be an a-hole, but I'm going to be honest with you. There's a bounty on your head, and it's a big one. And we have some debts we need to pay off with it. And while we've thought about claiming it, and we're we're still thinking about it, uh, we were also here to break a deal with you. I'm I'm sorry. Who who are you? Oh, you know you know damn well who I am. Doesn't the purple armor speak for itself? Um, no, it does does not ring a bell in my in my head here. I Tell am we are. I am your greatest rival, Ben Jetrin. And I'm no? Bob Swaim. I'm just standing back here just to clean up the mess and pay off the off the the bartender. So here's our deal. We. No, you've got some intel. And I know that there are big names buying intel. And if you'd be willing to answer some questions that we have, we might consider letting you go. Well, if we're talking money here, I think uh, I may be willing to to listen to what you have to say. Uh, oh, we're I talking see. about your freedom is what we're talking about. We're going to let you go. Oh, no, no, no. He, I see. He's, he's brokering a cut, too. Yeah. This guy's yeah, wily. I, I, I don't know. It depends on how messy this gets. All right. All right. We'll talk about a cut. Come on. Come here. Have a seat. Bartender. Three drinks. Some of your best stuff. Not too expensive, though. So, Brad Moore. Local boy, huh? Well, what we're looking for is is we hear that, that you play a game called Legion, and you're, you're pretty good at it. Now, if you don't remember, I, I was under a different alias, but we started this game together over a place called Atomic Comics. Uh, we were both there on the first uh, the first day that they ran it. You remember that? I think that sounds familiar. Yeah. What 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 made you want to play the game, and what's made you stick with it this long? Oh, I was really pretty resistant to get into it from my first foray into the uh, miniatures game, which was a uh, Star Wars Imperial Assault. Um, so I played that game for a little while, and I was quite disappointed. Um, so I really resisted getting into Legion, but after a little while of uh, watching some videos and seeing it played, it really kind of piqued my interest, seeing those large armies 
and iconic figures. Is is Legion what you were looking for in Imperial Assault? Because I know that Imperial Assault did like a skirmish game mode in it that it didn't super catch on the way they were hoping for. But yeah, uh, I mean, oh, I guess I can't say that I was necessarily looking for anything in in particular because uh, I did play X Wing for a while. That was probably the first thing I really got into. Uh, kind of got me into the the hobby. And uh, picked up Imperial Assault. And it was just kind of unintuitive in the way that it was kind of the way you could shoot, where it was really weird drawing line of sight from like a corner and stuff like that. It just felt weird. Um, And then I think I just liked the idea of those large armies, you know. um, Mm Mm-hmm. Very cool. Um, I know when, when, when we first started playing, we started playing Imperials because I was playing Rebel and you play Imperials a lot. And uh, and you've moved on to, to, I know you play a little bit of CI, uh, yeah, the Confederacy. Um, w- can you give me kind of just a quick why you, you like the Empire and why you like the CIS and you don't play the right people, which is the Republic? <laughs> yeah, I think, um, I don't know, just aesthetically, I was just more drawn to Imperials than, than Rebels. And then, of course, I mean, early on, playing uh, against you a lot, um, yep. it definitely, it's a lot funner to play not the same armies. So that definitely did sway me a little bit to, to keep going with Imperials, um, because they were really not fun to paint <laughs> white and black all day. The number one, the number one complaint of all empire players. Yeah. So and these white troopers, but I did like, um, you know, Vader is fun, even though he's not really, he's not quite that competitive, but he's still fun to play. Um, and then just all of the like bounty hunters, you know, Boba Fett, Bosk, Palpatine, all those really, cool characters i don't know i guess i like the the evil because then that kind of draw drawn me uh drew me to separatists uh, grievous especially but then i just knew that maul was coming eventually and i knew that i had to play him when he came out and i'm super excited that he is coming out soon he's going to be a monster he's going to be a force to be reckoned with uh, i hope so yeah. uh, it hope looks so. like it it looks like it um let me ask you this and I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna open up a can of worms here. What is your feeling on the 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 screaming that the Republic is way over powerful? I know we discussed this a little bit before when I built 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 the uh, feed board, and you had some opinions there, and I I like you to throw those out there because it's gotten worse. Yeah, I I don't know. I really hope that there's something that we haven't seen yet that is going to help balance uh, Arc Troopers because they just seem ridiculously good okay uh, what, what 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 makes you say that is it the standbys or is it the token sharing or is it fives being able to throw out an extra token every time or what 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 in your 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 vision is the biggest problem with them so even before fives and echo coming out they were still really strong to have a sniper unit that has tactical just seems ridiculously broken good. Like, yeah, I mean, yeah, that's just super good. I mean, because that's always been one of the things you can do with snipers is like, all right, if I get out of line of sight here, yeah, maybe they have to move, but um, they're not going to get their aim. So I have a pretty good chance of, of them whiffing. But now they've got tactical, so that's not going to help you. They can also um, put the jetpacks on there so they can jump anywhere they want, which helps their cohesion. Um, Because that's really the only way you can cohere and keep a guy down a level. They still have that lethal, so they're getting the free aim. So that lethal is always going to be on. I I I don't know. I would be interested to see what the uh, what the play testing groups you know had to had to say about it. Because I have to I have to guess that they're doing like they've got other units that we haven't seen yet, or like something else in the works that like they tested against totally fine which makes me wonder if that's like maul or the uh or maybe some uh some separatist unit down the line that we haven't seen yet or i don't yeah i i don't think that they just i don't think that they just like 
said, "Oh, let's give them these stats," and then released them. I'm, I'm, I, I, I share your feeling. I feel like there's something that we haven't seen yet that will balance everything out. But I I'm wonder. Almost, I'm almost positive they're going to get some kind of point change at the end of the year. Yeah, I wonder if there's not some kind of change coming to whether it's which I don't think arcs will get a point change since they're like just released. Um, but I wonder if there's some kind of um, rule change with clones in general that might Are you make the, them less oppressive. Are you of the mindset that they're going to stop sharing standby tokens? I, I would think that's probably... I don't know what else they could do. Uh, no. I heard a rumor from, from a pretty reliable source that I'm not going to mention what it was or who it was, but that, that there is a change probably going to be coming. Um, I think probably what they're doing is they're waiting till tournament time. They're going to let everybody play out and then probably... Probably smack us in uh, well, January. We're still so. getting a, we're still getting like erratas at, like before the end of the year. Yeah, yeah. So it That's, may be in that. I think it was September last year is when they did it. Yeah, yeah. I know. I know everybody but, was screaming about that last one that they put out. Well, it's got, done anything in it, and well, it was stuff that they put out like three months ago that should have been done already. But and the problem with uh, and the problem with like erratas and the point changes and stuff is it's happening with their other games too. COVID has stopped like all play that they can monitor. So. They're really just kind of going off whatever the community is saying, and they really don't have a whole lot to go off of otherwise. So when they like when they did their X-wing point changes and stuff, they were like, they like in the article, they were just like, "Hey, we haven't been able to see any real good play, so we can't really do anything." Judge if this is totally right, but here's a point change. <laughs> well, so. I think it's interesting because they do. I know at least I have seen a few people watching like the. Gen Con online and stuff and like oh, commenting yeah. on online games. So oh, yeah. I think that is, and I mean, if I was someone involved in the creation of the game, that would be a great place to look. Especially you know, at this time when there isn't much games going on. That's uh, TTS is about your only place to get any kind of solid information. And with it being not a, I don't know if it's, if it's not a real game but it not being exactly like playing for real that they can get a lot of data but i'm sure they can get ideas going in their mm-hmm. heads so this was this was cool um hey brad let's uh let's talk about some intel about uh you played in our first prime over over at atomic mm-hmm. and i can't remember where you placed in that but i remember somebody had shot your boss off the board in the first round that that was terrible can you kind of explain how that happened oh yeah oh you're just enough. making him. You're just making him explain, like, "Oh man, remember that bad thing that happened?" No, no, no. Because we're going to talk about this. good stuff. We're, we're going to throw good stuff here in a second. It's just I'm trying to give some history of, <laughs> of how he's become the good player that he is because he's he's excellent. He's yeah, really hard so, to beat. Yep. So Garnanana, uh, Casey Casey Jones. He is he's another local Indiana player. He's he's really good. I played him first time on on TTS. Uh, I don't know how long ago it was, but, um, and then really I've always just kind of tried to keep up. I like to read his articles and stuff. He has his own, um, little, what is it? Blog, I guess. Yeah. Blog he's, got a that blog. He does. he's got some really cool artwork on it. I don't know who would have drawn that for him, but yeah. Yeah. I don't we'll know. Find him and credit him. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. He's, I've always, we've played, both played empire and so I've always liked to read his articles and, and hear what he has to say about things. Um, and we got to play um, at that prime. And he ended up routing my, my boss off the board. That was nuts. I heard him scream down there, hey, they just killed boss right off the board, or ran him right off the board. And I went and had to go look, and I was like, oh, God, that's, oh. that sucks. <laughs> yeah, so it was, it, was, it was good, too. I mean... Because it was the first round, so I had a chance to potentially make his Krennic flee, but his Krennic rallied. My boss, I just didn't, I didn't quite recognize it at the time that he was getting up there on suppression. I didn't think that he would just blank all of them, you know. Sad. But so sad. but he did, and he was just in range to go right off the board first turn. So Man. that yep. sucks. Okay, let's let's, let's let's uh, let's bounce up to 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 your your probably your your really good game down in Indy at at a prime. Yeah, so that was I was still playing Krennic Bosk again. 
Um, Krennic Bosk, I had an IRG unit to kind of to defend against force users. Um, I had, let's see, I played um, a couple Empire lists first two rounds. And they were kind of newer players, um, really nice nice guys, um, but they were newer. And so those matches weren't super close. But then the third round, I played Matt Evans, um, a local indie guy, really good player. He was playing Rebels, um, and that was a tough one. He was playing Han. It's been a while, but I think he was playing Han, uh, an FD turret, a couple ATRTs, and some other stuff. Um, but that was a close match. Bosk really came through with his um, with his bomb. And you got your ticket to Worlds. Well, that was the third round. And then the fourth round, I played Brian Bear for the oh, for the yeah. championship. Yep. Another local local indie guy. He actually supplied a lot of the the tables there. Yeah, uh, he supplied tables at ours last time too. He he brought yeah, a lot really, of stuff. Really yeah. cool. Really really awesome thematic tables. Um, played on indoor. Yes, yeah, Mustafar. Yeah, we we ended up buying his Geonosis and his uh, Mustafar. His, uh, Mustafar table for for the store yeah. where we play now. Mm-hmm. Yep. Right there. But I played played against him. That was a that was a fun one because he was running Luke Sabine and saboteurs. I believe it was definitely saboteurs. I think it was Luke Sabine saboteurs and, and a land speeder. Mm, he did not have a land speeder. Okay, I was gonna say that's it. It sounds exactly like what I played against when he was at our prime. Because he was my round three, and he had mm-hmm. Luke Sabine, a whole bunch of saboteurs, and then like a naked land speeder just to just to mess with the back row. Uh huh. I think he had some feet. fleets. Oh, okay. That would have yep. been cool. So you ended so, up beating him and and getting your ticket, right? I did. It was a close. It was a close one because he got. Uh, it was he was blue, and so flipped over the cards, and I saw hostile or not hostile, uh, limited viz in the third third spot there and i knew immediately that he was going for it I was like well i'm um, with those sabs and i felt so bad i was like oh my gosh i just need to i just save some time here let's save three hours let me just let me just call it here but <laughs> um i ended up pulling it out um had some some trouble with luke but i was able to take him down and and uh, i think it was i think i was able to force like moisture evaporators and uh Ended up, I believe, I won on points. Very cool, very very cool. So you got your ticket to world, so you're you're ready to go, and All then right. uh, it comes around, and we had the, our our prime again, our second prime at Atomic Comics mm-hmm. up in Muncie. Give them a shout out because they basically take really good care of us. Uh, we all three play there, mm-hmm. and. Uh, we got that all set up, ready to go. And Ben, you want to you want to do the 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 play by play on that one and ask him the questions about that? Well, sure. Because what I was gonna say was, uh, Brad, how did your uh, how did your prime go through that? I was going to say earlier, your track record from what I've seen has been has been very well uh, in the competitive scene, and I usually see you ending up like near the top of the like near the top of the bracket, if not taking it all. Like I know that you like the, just this year at uh at the Gen Con uh, tournament that they had online, uh, mm-hmm. I believe you placed what was that eighth? Well, I was, I don't, I mean the top, the last four, I mean five through eight all lost the first round, so there's not really a a rating a ranking there. Okay, yeah, well, yeah okay, I was so in the top somewhere eight. in the top. Yeah, eight, which, which when I when I saw point. that, we 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 were looking. I was looking through and and because uh, Sean Morris from uh, Legion Academy. Shout mm-hmm. out to them guys. Um, I saw that he got fourth and I was just looking through the list of what played. I didn't even know you were playing in it because we, we've we been out because of the COVID thing. You haven't made it to a lot of the games because of it probably and you had stuff to do and you just mm-hmm. had babies and that good fun stuff. Congratulations. And mm-hmm. so like I was looking through and I got down to, to where it said eighth and it said Brad Moore and I'm like, surely to God there isn't two Brad Moores playing this game. There's no <laughs> way. So it's what, like, you doubt him? I just rang him up. I'm like, so, so did you get eighth place? Yeah, I, I, I got in there. Yeah. I was like, oh man, we got to interview you for our podcast, and that's how this came about. So go ahead, Ben. Yeah, no, you did a you did a great job in that. Uh, I thought that was really phenomenal. I was looking at it that morning when the when the round was going to start. I was looking at because they were like, go ahead and make a bracket, and I was just like, 
all right, let's see who we got here. And I was like, oh, that's Brad. And I was like, all right, this is going to be Brad's time to shine. I'm going to take him all the way down this bracket. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, well, my bracket busted round one, but that's okay. It was a, uh, I, I hope it was a, I hope it was a fun experience that, that you had though, because you, you went very far and I was very impressed. Yeah. I didn't expect less. I'll say that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Thanks. It was, I mean, yeah, it was, it was a lot of fun. It's tough. It's very different experience, like in person versus being at home. Like it's hard to actually get away from everything, you know, when you have two kids and a wife right. and everything going on at home. Um, so it's, um, it's a lot more chaotic. Do you prefer um, the in person over tabletop or? Oh, definitely. Other way oh, for sure. Yeah. Okay. Definitely in person. I think everyone does <laughs> a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I mean to, it's not to bag on TTS, but no. Yeah, well, oh, I mean TTS. If it wasn't for TTS, I probably would not be playing this game. Like if there was not um, this mod, and it's really a great mod. I mean, if you compare oh, yeah. it to to other mods that are out there, it is phenomenal um, mm-hmm. what they've done with it. Um, but being able to play um, and play against really good competition, you know, I've played against Luke Cook. Um, I've played against uh, Davis Kingsley, uh, just a whole bunch of people, really good players online, um, and it's really experience that that you wouldn't be able to get just from your local store. And I think that's what tor- uh, made me go to judging more because I, I I know you went competitive and I kind of went the other way of, of being a judge because. As, as I've said every show, I, I live out in the boonies in, in a hobbit hole, and we do not have internet. I'm actually in a secret location. Yeah, yeah. Bob, Bob, I thought you said that we were that. I, I thought you said you became a judge because you were bad at the game. No, I'm I'm really good at the game. Have have oh, okay. you ever? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll we'll have to go play it again so I can teach you that I am I am I am. Good at it, so. um, well, one, the uh, the other thing. So on. yeah, I was gonna say going back to uh, the prime that we had at uh, Atomic Comics, you. Uh, you got a you got a very very high place. Uh, you want to walk through your 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 games there just real briefly. Uh, yeah, first first round was clones. Uh, played against uh, I don't remember the name now, but he was uh, an indie player. He was playing clones. He had a couple bark speeders. Um, so that one was real real scary at first, but once I was able to get through those barks um wait bark speeders to, this wasn't they, paul watson was it? it the first round was not the <laughs> sec uh I'm second good. or third round was paul uh-huh. um, i Shout think the second paul. round i think the second round i played another guy from indy um and he was playing i believe it was veer's boss shoreline um which was real scary, yeah. But he ended up pushing his boss out um, a little too too aggressively, and I was able to take boss out, and then just ended up working through the rest of them. And then I played Paul for round three, and he was playing, I believe it was a couple barks, Obi, and I think it was just Obi. I don't think he had Rex. He had a bark um, full day. I did, and the Barks did not do a whole lot for for Paul either. Um, I was able, I can't remember, it must have been, must have been Vaporators, because I was able to sit back a little bit um, in that game and force force him to come to me, Um, and uh, took that one. Yeah, so that basically put you at top table uh, with some other with some other guy. Some loser. Some loser, yeah. I'm sure. I don't uh, remember who it was. That, he had a really easy uh, day, obviously. Yeah, I was supposed to face, but... <laughs> he had an easy day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's what it was. I was like, man, this was the easiest day ever. No. I, like... No, that's I've what already I said saying. it before. I basically, every single round, I was like, I can't believe this is happening. This isn't happening. This isn't even real. I'm, I'm dreaming this. I, I, w- I was dumbfounded with how, how I stumbled into top table <laughs> i really 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 wanted to see that game go off i know everybody is really tired because well one day we will yeah i know brad I, brad heroically even though he was even though he is famously my rival because i've never beaten him in a game of legion ever uh 
ever, and I will one day. If, mm, as, as, long as, as long as we're both playing it, I, I, will, I will fight to get that. We've been in like two or three tournaments, Brad, where you and I have paired up like round two. Mm-hmm. Exactly round two every time. And I'm just like, man, I'm just always going to face Brad, aren't I? Yes, and you I was are. Just like, I, I better get used to this. And Brad is an amazing player. Uh, he's one of the best players that I've ever played against. And it is very, it's a very challenging mindset I have to put myself in because I don't always know exactly what's going on. And sometimes I'm like, this is what's going to happen now. This is what he's going to do. And then Brad will be like, okay, now I'm going to do this. And I'm like, oh, that's a really good move that just won them the game. <laughs> and yeah, it's, it's always, I, I always miss something. It's always, it's always fun when I, when I do get paired up against you, just because, you know, at those local tournaments, there's a lot of newer players. And so like, it's great to be able to play newer players and, you know, kind of help, help them in some way. Um, also, but, um, to be able to get to play against a competitive player and you're always playing some, some weird rebel, (laughs) rebel stuff. And so it's always like, like I see your list and I'm like, okay, I think this should be not too bad. And then you always play, play it really well and makes it really tough. Um, that last game was, was so fun with, uh, when I had palp and, uh, the last, like the last activation, basically being able to snipe one of those box carriers. Oh yeah. <laughs> lone box carrier hiding behind Ooh. a rock. That was the closest the game screens. we ever had for yes. sure. Cause yes, I was going to say definitely. back at, back at Gen Con, I had one of my most infuriating experiences in Legion was being at a tournament and it was round two against Brad and we had a, and I wasn't, I, I was running ladies night, but I was not that good with it yet. This was still my early days of, of Ladies' Night. And I was like, okay. And we had Recover the Supplies, which is usually what I tried to gun for with that list. Because I there's a lot I can do with it. And I aggressively deployed Jin. Brad immediately was like, what if Jin was dead and made that happen? And I was like, oh, no. And then I was like trying to recover with it. And I was like, okay, we can grab this. We can move on. Okay. And then, I, we, and then we were very quickly falling apart. And I saw Sabine, and I was like, if Sabine can move here and grab this box and move, I might. And, and if some reason I can use this terrain and hold myself on 3 2 on boxes, I might have a chance of winning here. But it's going to take a lot. And then immediately Brad was like, all right, we're going to put this volley into Sabine, uh, six hits. And then I was like, all right, Sabine, best save in the game. Here we go, six blanks. She's dead. And I was like, what Six blanks. just happened? <laughs> yeah, and I was like, "Are you kidding me, Sabine?" Your Jin and your Sabine both, because I know Jin had a, a powered up danger sense save that she yeah, 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 she didn't yeah. do very well on either. So, <laughs> and I just all my commanders just blanked every single save and just died like round two or three, and like I was just like, "There's no winning this game now." I I don't just give up. I'll, I'll let anyone know. I've never conceded a game of Legion, even when I know that it's like impossible for me to win. I will play it out. Uh, and I was like, I I don't see... I, I was calculating every way I could do it. I was like, I don't see a way of winning here. And I just moved my dudes off to the side, and I was like, dodge standby, dodge standby, dodge standby. <laughs> Until the game was over. I was like, alright, cool. <laughs> Dang. But, no, that was, a, that was a great game. And so we were finally... We had... A bunch of experiences like this and we've had a bunch of great games and we came to the final table and i was like like i brad walked over to me and i can't speak for how i looked but i felt like i was like beaten up recent like freshly beaten up like my hair was all messed up and i was like sweaty bags under my eyes and i'm like hey man disheveled hey man you ready to, ready to go to final table and i was like i was looking and i was just like i've never beaten brad and this is where i'm gonna lose it <laughs> yeah, i'm gonna i'm gonna lose the final table because i've still never beaten brad and now i'm not even on my top game because i just had to put everything i had into beating brian in round three which was a stupidly close game and i was like oh i can't even i'm, I'm barely functioning right now my brain's fried and, and, and brad came over and was just like hey man good game i concede <laughs> and i was just like Brad, you're the nicest rival I've ever had. Yeah, we were standing this. around and we were all talking about it, going, okay, this is going to go for another two and a half hours. Here we go. This is going to be a lot of fun. And we know how it's going to end because Brad 
always beats him. And then he just walks around. Uh, and in his low Brad voice, it's just, uh, here you go. I concede. <laughs> and it's like, why did he? Oh, wait a minute. He's already got a ticket. Okay. Now, was it because you did it out of the kindness of your heart, Brad? Or were you just so tired you wanted to go home? He felt sorry. No, just kidding. Well, I will say, I came over and I said, congratulations. You did. Oh, yes, that's right. Because yeah. I know quote how quote. much, how difficult it is to get that, to get that ticket. And so I was, I was happy that, that you got it, you know, especially being someone that is a local, you know, you're always at the, the, the local tournaments that we have. And so to have a, a local win, our local prime, um, I was pretty happy about that was very proud of both of you that day because two guys from my store that that play regularly there both got tickets to worlds and then i actually with paul watson he he's almost a local boy he's fort wayne you know that's three people out of my area that 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 have gotten tickets and i got to hand their ticket to two of them and sign their ticket so you know to me that's just amazingly cool that we have that much of a talent pool here just just in Indiana and, you know, Chicago's got a good good talent pool there and, and every place else does too. But I mean, those are my local guys. Those are the people I talk to, you know, at least once a week, if not every day. Uh, Dependo and, and Watson and, and and you guys and a well, few other know, people. I don't know why you're calling me part of this talent pool. I blacked out at the start of that morning and then I woke up and I was getting a ticket signed. Yeah, there you go. I, I mean, know what you're talking about. You know, at, Paul, at least I got, I got to throw it at you. Paul is a lot of fun to play. I played him in, in Destiny also. He played he played Destiny. Uh, we were in we had played in a few tournaments against each other. He's a uh, he's fun to play against. He's an all around just nice guy. Doesn't say a bad thing about anybody, even if they deserve it. You know, he's always and he like, was what? sorry. He was playing in the the Fort Wayne one. Me and you went to Bob. Yep, he was. Yep, yep he's he's a fun fun guy. Love Paul I, would, I would hope. Well, yeah. all right. So I've got I've got a one more important question for you this one you this one's going one for a lot of money yeah this, this question is going for a lot of money on the market right now give me your uh give me your hopes for re- future releases either things that we know or things that we don't know coming to legion oh geez um he told you mall that's 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 well yeah we know he's very excited for mall everyone is is that I because am... is it because mall is one of your favorite characters brad i gotta pull something here Yes, yes. Yeah. Small oh. is such an iconic character. Um, I just I remember seeing, you know, in theaters when Phantom Menace when he when his lightsaber comes out and the first one comes out and then it's a little delayed for the second one and then the second one comes out and it's just like so awesome to see that yeah. double bladed <laughs> lightsaber and he's just flipping it everywhere. Um, the other the other character I I really want to see looking forward to is is Yoda for a similar, similar reason, you know, seeing, seeing that movie in theaters and when Yoda, uh, let's see, would that have been Phantom? That wouldn't have been Phantom. Attack of the Clones. Attack of the Clones. Monkey ape and just flew all over the place screaming and yelling. Yep. Where he's hobbling up with his cane and he takes his, takes his cape off and pulls out his lightsaber and starts flipping around everywhere. I just remember the theater going nuts. Uh, Oh yeah. (laughs) <laughs> I but remember that at the end. He was just like, oh, "Okay, I'm glad I'm done now, man. That's me. I'm really excited, and I do my thing, and then I, I'm like, okay, I'm gonna sit over here and take a nap because wow, well, that, that hurt. Too much info, yep. Bob. There you go. <laughs> yeah, but uh, for as far as the game, um, I'd love to see some kind of uh, theme theme bonus. Like if you have, like for Rebels right now, the Hoth. Like if you yeah. have a Hoth theme, like there's some kind of bonus you get for taking, you know, maybe it's it's Tauntauns, FD, uh, veterans, things like that. Hopefully, as we get more and more releases, that'll be something that they they look to to keep things fresh and and keep things, you know, just thinking of different team uh, compositions and stuff. I'd love to see that. Well, very cool. It's it's uh, been really good talking to you. You are our first uh, interview, so you you get kudos for that. It um, also means I'm not going to shoot you. Yeah, you don't get to sh- put put the gun away. You're fine. All right, all right. <laughs> it's holstered. I guess I can put mine away too. <sighs> Whoa! Oh, I didn't even notice he had his out. Holy crap! I, I did. I was just waiting for you guys to shoot each other, and I was going to take all the money and drink your drinks, and then I'm going to leave and go get a new partner. But thanks for saving that because, well. 
It's hard enough All with right. him. All oh, right, Bob, Brad. you wouldn't have got to leave. Oh, oh. Well, you think so? <laughs> Ooh, Ooh. Uh-huh. yeah. Well, that's that's kind of sad because the bartender's got a gun pointed at you behind the bar, so it's fine. <laughs> oh man, I paid him off to to make sure that I did walk out of here, even if either one of you guys didn't. So, uh, so we'll just age... have to see who paid him more then. Yeah, old age and treachery, <laughs> boys. Old age and treachery always take you down. All right, you guys are starting to make a scene here, so one of us ought to walk out. Sure. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you so much for talking to us. Thank you so Thanks much again, for coming Bobby. on the show. It. And uh, we will find another way to cash in this bounty, and your your check will be in the mail. All right. Thanks for having me, guys. Anytime. Wait, before you leave, one last question. Would you kindly tell the people at home what you use as a tray when you come to the local events? My my <laughs> Sex in the City tin. That's what I carry my models in. I also have an Elmo one, uh, depending on my mood. Uh, It's like everyone comments on it as soon as they see it. It's like Bob walks up to the, or uh, Brad walks up to the table with this Sex in the City tin, sets it down, and then you're just like, oh. Oh, he's going to get his ass kicked. That's that's a neat tin. (laughs) I found that at Goodwill. I found that at Goodwill for like, two bucks and i i saw it i was like oh my gosh and i looked at the the dimensions of it and i was like that should be perfect and i, I had to have it and it's so, it's perfect if it it's everything so, everything so you I bought it with legion in mind oh absolutely awesome that's even i'm better. still always on the lookout for for good tens <laughs> that's so awesome because that was the first thing i noticed when, when you showed up it was probably the third or fourth time that we had played it was like the hell are you carrying your stuff in that for <laughs> you're like i don't know i like it i'm like that is kind of cool <laughs> it's perfect yeah, it's, i wish that i had something like that for carrying ladies night my, my ladies night list around it and like i need i need something like that because that's brilliant goodwill man take all it, right take I'll, a look. I'll start Anyone scouring goodwill see, check it out. that'll be it all right you can go sorry to keep you up just had to just had to ask all right. Got my eye. All right. All right. No problem, guys. Uh, anytime. Just let me know. Thanks again. All right. See ya. Well, that was fun. I still should have shot him. Maybe in the lake, just so he remembers who you are. Yeah. I I feel like I got I feel like I got downplayed. Oh well. Anyway, where was I? Uh. Oh, we were, tra- we were tra- swapping stories. Yes. So I went to celebration this last year. 2019 the last the last celebration that celebrated until COVID happened and stopped everyone's celebration i went to uh star wars celebration and it was a grand old time it was my first one and the only one that i've been to i hope to go to more which you might not expect after i start this story because the story has a very sad opening so i went with a friend of mine who uh was it wasn't me right it was not you okay Best friend ever, man. No, no. It was, just, <laughs> it was, just a friend of mine. was he your Chewbacca? Will, no. no, she was not. Uh, but we went on a little trip up toward uh, Indy. Or not Indy. It was in... Chicago. Well, it was in Chicago. Yeah, I was like, whoa, why did I think it was in Indy? I was going to say, why do you think it's in Indy? Because I would have went. So. <laughs> yeah, you would have gone. Uh, no, it was in Chicago. And I scraped together the funds. And I got about 75% of the way of the money that I needed to go to the con. And then I went to the con anyway. So that was money I didn't have, and I went anyway. So I, but it was an it was an awesome trip. Everything was great. Uh, I had a few I had a few goals. I was only going for one day because, like I said, I really didn't have the funds to be throwing this at. And we, uh, sort of just were playing it a little by ear because this was our first time going. Which when you go to a convention, you can't really know what to expect. So I had picked out a couple things that I knew I wanted to try and get. It was all pretty much merchandise. Uh, I was I was going for the um, uh, I'm a big Funko Pop collector. We can we can discuss numbers of what percentage of that is Star Wars, and I'm staring at a bunch of them on my shelf right now. And ooh, it's a big number. Anyway, uh, not a number I'm willing to calculate now or later. Uh, anyway, so I was going to get, um, they did some Star Wars Celebration exclusive Funko Pops for Star Wars that they had that were going to be, uh, 
this like blue chrome. So they had a Leia and a Vader and a Stormtrooper, Chewbacca, Boba Fett. Uh, I wasn't going to name them all, but I realized I just named like five out of the six of them. <laughs> I think there was a sixth one. Now I can't remember. Uh, it'll, it'll, it'll come to me randomly later. Uh, but then, and then they were going to do, and then they did some gold Chrome exclusive ones to go to shared stores. So like GameStop got one and, uh, and like Hot Topic got one. And so like, I had to get all those when I came back, but I was going to try and get the ones at the con. Well, I go there and I'm like, first thing I go in the door, I got, I had straight to Funko and they're like, Hey, we're not doing lines right now. So beat it. And I was like, Oh, well that's fine because I also have to go to fantasy flight. And I immediate. So like that detour took like f- five minutes max, not even that, like three minutes. I went over there. They were like, we're not having you in line. Oh, it's Yoda. That's I, yep. Just remember it was Yoda. That was the last pop, the sixth one. Anyway, so I'm like, oh, I got to go over to Fantasy Flight anyway, because I got to get this Celebration Vader. Yeah. D- d- fun, no. Fun. Yeah, I was going to say real fun story on how that happened. I didn't go into it, but we were there in the line. We were probably in the, like, first fourth of the line to get into the vendor hall when it opened. So I was I felt real good about our chances. I was like, hey, we're in the, we're in, like, the first fourth of this line. And we're going to beeline right for, like, Funko. We're going to beeline right for Fantasy Flight. Like, we got this. I get to Fantasy Flight, and I'm, like, in this relatively not that long line. And I'm like, yeah, this is going to be great. I, I got to get the Funko stuff later, but I'm going to do this. And I got there, and guy comes up to me, and he's just like, all right, if anyone's here for the Celebration Vader, they're already sold out. And I, my heart broke. I was like, are you kidding me? They're already sold out, and they're, like, telling me, like, yeah, they rationed them out, like, per day. They have, like, 25 or some ridiculously low number per day, which were all selling out before the doors opened. Because the vendors got them all. Well, vendors are VIPs or something. But, yeah, people that were allowed in before the doors were even open, which was, uh, I felt so, it was the most feels bad moment. I know a guy that who did early in the line. line. Get this in. guy doesn't even play. He got one because he was inside. He was a vendor. Yep. It was like, God, dude, come on. Yeah. So it was very disappointing because that was one of the things I was mostly looking forward to. And I said, well, OK. And I ended up buying some stuff because they were doing the uh, they did the 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 pins. It was like Star Wars pins that you can like get uh, certain vendors if you spend so much money. So they had a so they had Sabine. And I was like, oh, I have to get this. So I made like two. I think it was like. 30 or 50 dollar orders you had to do i think it was 30 dollars or something it was like i could do because it was like one purchase per person and i was like okay well me and then my friend who doesn't play legion at all so i was so i just did two purchases got two sabine pins and i was like all right cool so that was a bust and we went okay well now i have autographs that are planned later and before i do that we're going to go over and We'll wait at Funko again. I go back. They're like, no, we're still not doing lines. Beat it. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> and I'm like, fine, we'll go get lunch. We'll go do like a 30 minute lunch break and then we'll come back. So we go get lunch, which is like, there's a second floor to this convention center. By the way, convention center, beautiful. Made me miss Indiana's convention center in Indy because this thing was confusing as hell to figure out where I was supposed to go and all, all that. And I was like, man, I wish this was in the Indie Convention Center because I know that one so well. But it was it was really beautiful when you were in the showroom, actually, because there was tons of stuff. Star Wars everything, as far as you could see, of every variety. They had actual models set up. They had, like, life-size TIE Fighters and X-Wings and really cool ships. They had, like, cars that people had that were, like, decked out to, like, star wars high heaven uh and then you had merchandise of every different kind you could think of was lining all of these booths and it was beautiful it was definitely the place to go if you wanted to say goodbye to your wallet and so we have so they have a second floor which was purely dedicated to concessions so it was very easy to find wherever you were in the vendor in the vendor hall you could be like hey there's there's where i feed so you go up there you get your eats. I was there for, we were there for like 30 minutes max. I go back. There's a huge line. And I'm like, wow, I wonder what all these people are in line for. Must be something cool. I get to the front of it. 
it's the Funko line. They oh. started. There's a and there's a line leading all the way down this crazy down these crazy corridors, and I'm like, okay, let's get in the line. <laughs> get in the line. We're moving at a snail's pace. I'm honestly kind of upset because I'm like, man, I'm still I'm still hopeful. I'm like, man, we busted on Celebration Vader, but I'm gonna get these pops. I'm, I'm really looking forward to these. And like, there was people that were like, man, if you go, please bring me this. And I was really looking forward to bringing them then. Uh, and it was gonna be really awesome. And I was really looking forward to it. We go snail's pace through this line, and we get all almost all the way through the line, and we're like near the end of it, and it's really starting to slow down. And I look, and I was gonna meet. Serastro, you know who that is, right? Oh yeah, the painter. He's a, he's a god. Yes, he's, and for anyone that doesn't know, he is the painter on YouTube of the highest quality. He does uh, Fantasy Flight games, so he's done Marvel Crisis Protocol. He's done Star Wars Legion. He did Imperial Assault, which is where I found him back when I did Imperial Assault. And he just does amazing painting videos. If you have not heard of him join the rest of the wargaming community and go check him out <laughs> i'll just say shame on you okay there you go. well i'm not gonna shame anybody for not knowing him. but anyway so i meet him or I, i'm 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 needing to meet him at the same time we're in this line and i turn and i'm just like hey will you wait please like could you wait in this line for me to my friend and i'm like could you wait in this line please and just let me go meet him just really quick because I don't want to miss out on meeting him because I waited in this line because we don't even know if we're going to make it through this line before they sell out. And she was like, yeah, no problem. And I went over and I got to meet him. Dude's big in real life. <laughs> he is tall. Uh, and I was like, oh, oh, hi. And he was and he sounded, you know, just like he does in the videos. And he was just he was painting Death Troopers and it was just like such a cool experience to to get to talk to him like one on one and well one on one he was surrounded by like ten people at the time so it was it was it was really just kind of like a small Q and A people were just asking him a bunch of questions and it was really cool to just talk to him like as a person and then I nerded out because I I brought uh like I brought something for him to sign because I was like I'm gonna get Sarastra's autograph while I'm here because that'll be cool and I brought I I bought uh, a small like very small like uh, I, want, I don't i don't know like six inch by six inch like blank canvas like an actual canvas for a painting and i had him sign that just with like a marker so i have a painting canvas that's that's painted or that's a uh, that's autographed by sarastro so that was fun uh and he was nice and i was like all right cool and i was like yeah that was that was great and i went back to the line and then all the all the happiness that i had in, in meeting serastro went away and all the existential dread of oh my god am i gonna bust on this as well started to sit in and then we sat through that line for hours i tell you 60 to 70 percent of my day was spent in that line that's nuts it was so terrible and i was starting to just feel really really bad and then i looked at the time and we were maybe getting to the actual part of the line where there was like ribbons we had gotten to that point and I looked at the time and I calculated our, the, the, the movement of the line versus when we were going to make it. They still supposedly had them, but if we waited in this line any longer, I was going to miss my autographs. And I had a decision. I said, am I going to give up seeing, meeting some of, some of like Star Wars, some actual people who were in Star Wars? Am I going to pass up on that for these stupid Funko Pops? And it took me very short to be like, no. And I was just very sad because I waited in that line like all day. And, that and I sucks. was like, and I was like, all right. And we were, we were packed in. So I had to actually ask the organizers of the line to let us out. And they were like, oh, I'm really sorry you waited in that whole thing. And now you're leaving. And I was just like, yeah, no, I was, I was bad. I was in bad shape. You would think that, like, being surrounded by Star Wars stuff, I was going to be, like, in a good mood the entire day. No, I had busted out on two of the main, like, things that I came here to get. I was going to get those Funkos, I was going to get the Vader, and I busted out on everything. And I was not having a good time. I was just, I felt really bad, and my friend was, like, trying to cheer me up. And she was just like, hey, you know, I, I'm, 
I'm pretty mad at everything. She was actually going to like raise a raise an argument with the people organizing the line, and I like stopped her. I was like, no, 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 this is not their fault. <laughs> this is this is not their fault at all. Do not start a fight with anybody. <laughs> and I was, and I just felt really, really sad, and I, I just was was. It's hard to explain, but I was just very sad, and it was like kind of bittersweet because I was surrounded by Star Wars stuff, and it just kind of made it more sad because I wasn't. Bring, because it wasn't bringing me that much joy because I had just busted out on everything I went for. Not everything. Because what turned everything around was getting to meet actual people who were in Star Wars. And this was like I started out walking up to where all these people were. You could see the lines leading up to these people and you could spot them even if you didn't buy an autograph for them. You could still see like where they were down the line at a table. And I could see people from rebels i saw people from all sorts of different star wars stuff like the live action movies there was a a huge huge line for uh for for palpatine because he was there uh ian mick uh mick i i always don't know how to pronounce his name dr diarmid i think that was the way it goes yeah something like that so he yeah he was there and he had a huge huge line i couldn't even see him at the end of it that's how big it was but then they had uh who was it oh oh james arnold taylor was there and i really wanted to get his or i really wanted to get his autograph and i was like oh but i didn't like pay for it ahead of time and i was like oh man and they were like hey you can you can still pay for autographs and stuff you just have to do it at like you just have to do this blah, blah blah and i was like okay and what i had brought was I was going to bring a Django pop because Tamora Morrison was going to be there. And that was going to be like the biggest, coolest person to meet in Star Wars for me was freaking Django Fett and all the clones Tamora Morrison. I was like, oh, my God, this is so awesome. And like a week before he canceled, he wasn't able to show up because of quote unquote professional reasons. And I was like. What even? What 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 happened? Like what? Why couldn't he show up to Star Wars Celebration? Because and he then, was doing Aquaman. Oh, no, sorry. not because he was doing Aquaman. You know, the only production that I know of in my head that Tamora Morrison did last year was the freaking Dora the Explorer movie. Oh God! And I thought if he didn't show up to Star Wars Celebration because of Dora the Explorer, we are gonna have words when I meet him. That's that. Uh, no, no, Rex wouldn't do that. Sorry. No. <laughs> anyway, the I really missed out on the chance to see him, and I was really sad. But I at least I got refunded that. That was also one of the more expensive, uh, one of the more expensive autographs and photo ops that I was going to do. What I did bring for everyone else was I brought, like I said, I'm a big pop collector, so I brought some pops that I wanted to have signed, and just in case I had. Some some extra money floating around for some random reason, or I just could not, uh, or I just could not withstand what was happening. I brought some extra pops because of people that I knew was going to be there just in case. So what I brought was, I pr- I purchased the Tomorrow Morrison one, which I got refunded for. Then I bought Vanessa Marshall, which is the voice of Hera, which is, lo- yeah, love her, uh arguably my favorite star wars female like her and sabine uh so i was really looking forward to that sabine was going to be there on the days that i wasn't there so i missed out on that i was super sad but i was like okay well i'm gonna get um i'm gonna get Hera's autograph which is which was gonna like make my whole day to get to meet vanessa marshall and then i brought my i didn't have a pop but i bought but i had the general veers card for legion and I was going to have that signed by Julian Glover, who played... That would be amazingly Veers. cool, also. You say, would be, but it happened. Nice. And I also had an autograph for Junis Suatoma, who play, who's the new actor for Chewbacca. And Peter Mayhew was supposed to be there, but then ended up canceling. And then it yeah. was like, shortly after that, he passed away, sadly. So... It was very sad that no, he wasn't that he couldn't even make it to the last celebration. I was very sad, but we had, but he, but the guy was like he wanted Peter Mayhew's autograph, and then he canceled before it, before the con happened, and he was like, okay, well, could you get me Junisu Atomo? He also had a pop that he wanted signed, so All I right. got to meet 
Junisu Otomo, and he is super awesome. He was super, super nice. And he signed the pop, and someone else was asking him, like, yeah, so, like, what was, like, what was it like being cast as Chewbacca? Like, how, how was that process? And they are like, how did they pick you? And he was just like, well, I mean, you know, you do, you do your homework, you, you do, you do this acting, you do, you, you, you be a good guy. And then, you know, what helps is you be like six foot, whatever, six, like seven foot, whatever he is. He was like, he was was shorter actually than Mayhew was. So they said, well, he was like, it helps to be, you know, enormously tall. And it also helps that I can do this. And then he did the, like the Chewbacca sounds like on the spot. Like really, really good impression. We were just like, "Whoa!" It was just like, and we were like, "What the? You can do that? <laughs> that's crazy!" It wasn't like totally movie accurate because you know that's a whole sound department working on making that. But it was very cool to hear. It was just like, "Oh man, he's 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 almost he's Chewbacca right here." And so that was awesome. And I met Julian Glover, and he was, and that was such an honor to meet him because he took all his time out of this day to come here. And sign all these people Star Wars stuff. I mean, they all did, obviously. But it was like such... It, it felt like a different kind of honor to meet Julian Glover. It was just so... It was so cool. And I and I told him that. I was just like, man, it's a, it's a, it was an honor to meet you, sir. And he was just like... And I remember him. He like looked back and he was like, it's an honor to meet you too. And I was nice. like, wow, that's so cool. <laughs> and he was just really happy to like see fans and stuff coming out. And he was just... He had a, a great time. He was just a wonderful human being. And what, like I said, so what really made my day was I got to meet Vanessa Marshall. And man, I came up to her. I think she was the first one I did because I was still like coming off the sad feelings and I was just really in a bad shape. And I came up to her. I waited in the line and she was like, and she was like, hey, how's your, like, so how's your day going? And I was just like, I'm going to be perfectly honest with you. I've had a really bad day up until now because <laughs> I like, I didn't want to just be like, Oh yeah, it's good. Yeah. Like I, I thought about it and then I was just like, ah, I'm just going to be honest with you. I've had a really bad day. And she's just like, Oh no, what happened? And I walked her through very briefly because I knew there was a line and that I wasn't supposed to sit here and have a one-on-one with Vanessa Marshall, right. even though damn, I wanted to. Uh, but I sat there and I was like, well, you know, I had this happen and this happened and it was kind of sad. And she was just like, oh, well, like, and she was like, well, I'm so sorry, but I like, I hope you're going to have your, she was like, what are, what are you doing for the rest of the night? And I was like, well, I'm doing autographs pretty much at this point. And I told her that I loved Hera and she was one of my favorite Star Wars characters. And she was like, oh, that's great. And she was so nice. And she, she turned my whole day around just talking to her. And she was like, well, let's, and she was like, well, I hope you have a good one. And I hope your day starts to turn around. And she signed the pop. I got, I got the sweet XOXO. Oh, so I, that, that, nice? that made my whole day. <laughs> and I was like, awesome. And I went over and I was like, well, I didn't buy the pops, which was going to be a huge money. I didn't buy the celebration Vader, which was also going to be money. I think I have money for more autographs. So I went over and I purchased an autograph for Taylor Gray and Freddie Prince Jr. And I got to go meet them. And Freddie Prince Jr. was super cool. Um, he, I think he was just, ha- I think he was done for the day because they were they were winding down of autographs. So they were winding down of what the day was going to be. And I met him and it was very, it was very, it was very business. It was like, here you go. Thanks for, thanks for coming out for support. Blah, blah, blah. There you go. And I was like, I feel like he's just, I, I was like, I'm not going to judge him based on that. I think, I think he's just kind of tired. We're all kind of tired. He's coming at the end of the day. That's fair. And he signed my, he signed my Kanan, my Kanan awesome. pop. That's very cool. And then I got to meet Taylor Gray, Ezra Bridger. And I went, and dude, people do voice acting to do different characters. He yep. does nothing. He is just Ezra Bridger. <laughs> That's what he does. That's yeah, what he sounds he, like. I was, and I was like, and I was like, yeah, it must've been like, how cool is it to be like Ezra? You know, I'm not asking these people like really interesting questions, I guess. I was just like, man, like it must've been awesome to be Ezra. Like it, it's my dream to be in star Wars. Like I can't, I can't even imagine how awesome that is for you. Uh, and he, and then he like was answering. He was like, yeah, like I, I've had a great time. And like Ezra was such a fun character to do. And I'm like, I'm like pausing. I'm like, you, you are just Ezra, like your voice. You're not even doing anything. That's just Ezra. And he was just like, yeah, I know. It's, 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 it was super easy for the job because they were just like, yeah, just your voice the way it is. Just keep it. 
And so I just got to come in and, you know, these other people are putting in like doing all this, all this work to get their voice to be right. And I'm just there. (laughs) (laughs) And I was just like, that's so cool. And I was like, man, when when are they going to get you to do live action Ezra? Cause you're just him. And he was like, I don't know. They haven't told me yet, but it'd be real neat. It'd be, it'd be real fun to do. That would be awesome to see them do a, a whole live rebels movie. Or a show, you know, maybe, maybe we got something coming out. Maybe they do. They do have the platform. I've heard rumors, you know, anywho. Well, we've got, uh, we've got to wrap up here probably soon. We've gone very much longer than we anticipated, Bob. Yeah. Yeah. Bob. Yep. Let's burn through short discussion of arc troopers and call it a night. All right, here we go. Arc and here's troop- the deal. A lot of people skip to past our Star Wars stories because they don't give a crap. So they're just coming here for the arc discussion anyway. So here we go. We, it's, it's, like be, a, it's, it's like a it's like a new podcast. Be, it's going to be the shortest thing we do the, all night. This is cool. Um, <laughs> so it'll be the shortest podcast you listen to. Yes, there you go. Um, arc Troopers. What can I say? I was very, very lucky. I got three boxes of them. Um, probably only need two, but I'm a glutton for punishment. So That's all I got. Uh, Two if you're gonna if you're gonna want to run three snipers though, you can do it with with Echo and, and fives. But eh, I don't know. I, I I'm gonna paint them all up different, weird, weird, weird stuff. Um, let's start with the competitive side of arcs, and the then let's side. and then I'd like to touch on some hobby stuff with arcs. Okay, competitive. From what I've heard from from TTS, they just kill everything just they're just monsters everybody hates them everybody's screaming neuter them neuter them neuter them blah 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 um i think tts makes makes it where you can see what they can do but i don't think until you get them on an actual table and get to play them and play more than one game which is about all i've got in with them um against them actually i wasn't even playing yes i I don't play clones all the time um what yeah it's kind of weird one of my buddies mike my, my my chewbacca my, my 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 best friend in the world besides Ben. Um That's better. Sn- That's how you should have led. Yeah, whatever. He uh <laughs> he put a sniper team in and uh Iden Versio is just she's she's a bigger monster against snipers because she's all the way across the board and my buddy made she the mistake. A sniper. Yeah, well, yeah. But of course she's got the sniper. I, that's what yeah, I use it for. Of course, but uh, yeah, it's not too bad. I've seen but, her run I've seen her run all different ways and they all seem to have their benefits. Anyway, anyway, it's not about uh, items. It's about I, I popped his snipers off the board pretty quick, so he really didn't get to do much with them because he was range five and I was range. Oh, you're there. Okay, boom. Yeah. So um, <laughs> there you go, I everybody. Mean, that's, Use Iden. Yeah, Use Iden. Kill your arcs. That's how you do I, it. We just, kill, we just, kill we just arcs, crack the right, coast. Yeah. She's a monster. Crack the coast. Um, crack the code. Um, crack the case. I just combined them. Yeah. There crack the coast. Yeah. Okay. But um. Like I said, I haven't got to play anything but that. That was my first, last, and only. I've made three or four armies that I think are going to work. Um, I, like uh, like Brad said, you know, the the the, the arcs are, are just insanely crazy. Um, I'm going to be running a couple of arc uh, full full units, and I, everybody think I'm crazy. I'm not going to put a sniper in with it because I feel I can get more out of my other troopers. But I think if if you get a good mix of arcs and phase twos and phase ones. And I know everybody wants to play the Overwatch game. I, I don't know if that's going to last too much longer. Eh. We'll have to see how that goes. Um, I, I Honestly, I've thrown in the offensive push. Instead, it's the same four points, and that, that aim comes in handy. Oh, yeah. Especially with the share. I mean, the more, offen- uh, more of those you can get out there with, with clone sharing, I think that's where the arcs shine. You, you put your, your, your support guys with your Z6s behind them, get them into a good position, and then your arcs spend their points. Um, you, of course, you use Echo and you use Fives, and Five gives that extra extra command token out there, which is amazingly cool. But oh, yeah. even even on their own, I think I think those two are going to be you're going to see those a lot. I put mine in in Arc Trooper units, but I think you're going to see them a lot with the uh, with the Phase Two clones leading leading those out because um, they bump up your 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 courage value, plus they give you extra uh, dice to your guns, um, and they give you extra hit points. So. I could totally. see that that going, but I think the ARC Troopers are going to do really, really good. Um, we'll probably do a report on them a little bit later, maybe next next podcast after I've got to play them. 
Um, I like I say we play at the house every week, but I was not in the mood to play him this week. I don't have him painted. I just got him unboxed. I've got my fives put together, and he's he's cool. Except for painting his head, you guys are going to go nuts trying to put that five on his brow. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm, right. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I know I'm going to. I'm going to mention Chris Zinga here because he actually helped me out. He actually went and got a paint marker, a I think it was a five mil paint. Ah, marker, that's what he did. Drew it on there, and very we, cool. We don't know if you can like spray it with dull coat or whatever yet. I, I'm, I'm actually getting my my five mil. I'm actually getting oh, it was a zero zero one mil, uh, paint marker tomorrow, and I'm gonna try it. And that'll be a future episode when we talk about hobbying and how we're painting them and how you're gonna do the, all your arc troopers because arc troopers were basically just single units that they would slap as an attachment. So it's kind of fun to gonna be running running a whole squad of them. Yep. yep. That's kind of my take on on on, on them right now. The, they, the competitively, model, yeah, the models are absolutely beautiful. The flight stands are fun. You can actually put them in weird positions and do all kinds of stuff with them. Um, Hold that thought, Bob. Yeah, we're gonna talk about hobbying in just a moment. Oh yeah, go ahead. Let me get the competitive BS out of the. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Let me go get ahead. the competitive notes out of the way, and then I we can and then we can dive into the hobbying on arcs. Because I, I yeah, you and I both have some 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 fun stuff to talk about for the i know i know you've got some really cool stuff you want to talk about with the arcs yep uh so just real quick i have not had as many games as a lot of the other people have said with arcs and in fact in any of those games i have not run the full unit which i really want to do i just have not had the means or the time with uh, coronavirus and everything dampening when we can go out and play games uh what i have been able to do is i have played a couple tts games with a couple snipers and I can say that those snipers are really nice uh, when they don't get picked off by Aiden or Cassian. Uh, they are really effective. They're really strong. And they really dole out the punishment. And I can imagine why full squads with jetpacks and, you know, offensive push or overwatch or something would be the scariest MFers to, in the air. Uh, so I'm really, I, I really look forward to trying them as a full unit. But I've only, up until now, tried them as a... Uh, Tried in the strike teams. And between fives and echo, I have not run echo yet. But I have run fives in a skirmish game that we did um, in preparation for this upcoming Saturday after this episode comes out. This next epi- this next Saturday, we're going to be doing some skirmish events. And Josh and I have been playtesting some lists around. No, I'm not playing clones. I'm going to be playing some real fun stuff that we might talk about later. But awesome. uh, I did play clones against josh because he was trying a really cool list and i was like hey you're probably going to be facing clones do you want to play against a clone list and he was like yeah sure and so i played uh some clones uh, it was rex and i think it was four phase ones and one of those phase ones had rec- uh, fives in them and so i was able to pl- and i just proxied him obviously because you know they weren't out yet uh but i uh proxied a fives and I play tested him in a skirmish and man can I tell you that that uh, that Rex take that clankers with the extra order from fives going on to someone else boy howdy can I tell you how awesome that turn is I leveled the playing field <laughs> on that turn getting those extra range out of those out of three units of troopers yeah that's going to be a monster effect that's that's so cool then that's the one thing that people were were, were cranking about oh oh, you can shoot range four with your arcs so or range three if if you want to use their pistols and get extra dice because it's black and white so you're going to get two dice for for all your troopers if you play the the clanker card and you're within range three so either way a lot of scary plays yeah it's it's going to be a monster out there. It's it's going to be fun to see what they do. It's going to be fun at a skirmish to see what people bring. Um, I got, I've got a clone put together, a clone uh, skirmish game if I get to play um, that I'm going to try out. That hopefully it's going to be really good. I'm pulling it up here on my phone if I can get it to work. Hey, the internet works here really good. Um, unlike my house, it's a 500 pointer. I'll run through it real quick and then we'll maybe move on to some hobby. And it's Rex with aggressive uh, offensive push and, and uh, recon intel. Where's your jetpack? Uh, uh, I didn't staple it to it yet. On the other version, Idiot. For, no, for my my 800 point. Of course, he's got a jetpack staple staple to it. You um, have done 500 as well. Uh, too many points. Nope. Uh, two All right, Z6s. Bob, you just you just lost your place on dice time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Two, two, <laughs> that was our two, whole thing. You staple that card. 
to Rex. Five I, Rex is ninety five points. Hashtag yeah, Rex yeah, is yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, anyway. Two phase twos <laughs> with Z sixes, of course, and then two two five two arc units. So it's only five activations, but I've got fives and echoes in it with a couple of phase twos backing them up. Um, and Rex Great. with offensive. So it should be fun. Hopefully I'll get to play it out. Hopefully, uh, hopefully if I have to teach. Are you playing I, Saturday? Um, I might. I don't know. I'm probably gonna. Cool. Ju- don't pair on... me up. Don't pair me up with you. Yeah. We'll, yeah. <laughs> we'll see how it. We'll see how it works. It depends. Actually, on no. You know what? Pair us up. We'll see what happens. You'll see. You'll see what yeah. I'm. Well, you you sort of have a hint of what I'm bringing, but you'll see. Yeah. yeah. No. It's not probably I'll be judging and and doing some behind the scene work and seeing what we've got for prize support because we always hand out prize support. I didn't print anything this this week, so I, we handed out some uh, boxes last time, I think, and some tokens and some other stuff and. Then we got some cards. So. The week is young, Bob. There's it still, still is. still printing time. Yeah, if I can get stuff going. I don't know. Depends. Got a busy week. Got my clones to paint. I want to feel, feel the actual clones instead of proxy stuff. Yeah. We're, we're, we're really laid back at the store. Um, that's the one thing. If you ever make it to Muncie, we, we do, do a it. lot of them. Yeah. The come, come on by. Fun fact, we're, I'm going to be, uh, and I haven't total. I'm not going to make a big deal and segment out of this, but I'm going to be moving. Uh, and I'm going to be moving further away from Muncie by like another hour or two. I'm still going to do my best to try and go there because the store is worth it and the community is worth it. If I can go, the, I'll also retain the title for the furthest drive to go to Muncie to play there you go. for a couple hours. Uh, and if you are anywhere within that range, you need to go. We have a good time. We try to take care of everybody. We, 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 we don't condone beating people up, but we condone, you know, competitive. Um, and then, you know, if you don't want to play competitive, if I'm not getting to play because I'm, I'm judging or whatever, we have an odd number, I'll take people off to the side and we'll just have to play fun games and, and teaching games. And, yep. and that's, that's what I like to do. I mean, I, I can play competitive, but I, I don't like to because I get, I get mean sometimes and and being a judge is is really cool because i still get to play i still get to see everything you know i i I get some of the cards that that i could have won and stuff but i get to watch people have a good time and to me that's 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 the greatest thing like i said when 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 ben got his ticket to worlds and and when paul got his ticket to worlds i got to sign those tickets and just watching the smile on their face you know when i handed them a ticket and all the cool prizes that they won for getting it you know, to me that was that was almost as fun as, as you know winning, you know, and getting to play the whole time. But yeah, it's 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 a good store. We're 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 I'd like to say we're family oriented, and we are mostly. Um, but yeah, it's it's really cool, really really cool. It's very nice. And yeah. now that we're done with the atomic comics uh, segment of our show. <laughs> let's get back to rx <laughs> they have to give me a I, I, I completely I, I think i derailed us there on accident you kind of did but it was a good derail it was a good there plug. We go. yeah anyway so um as far as the other thing with arcs go before we get into just a short little hobby bit about we're never them, gonna um, do hobby and stuff right yeah it's we're never just, gonna get to that it's just not a thing next show anyway uh no the uh the the other thing i just wanted to briefly mention was like i've seen a whole bunch of posts about it in the community and I've seen everybody ripping on FFG and Asmodee and everybody from their local game store all the way up to Big Big, big Brother, Big Corp. Uh, everyone just remember, before you turn this game into a toxic war game community, step back, take a breath, and remember that these are plastic toys that you will get in maybe a couple months later than you expected. But you will get them. I'm just going to say this on, on it, and then I'm going to stop. You were having fun before they even announced clones. You were having fun, you know, when, when everybody was just playing Empire and Rebels. And, yes, I, I'm a clone player. I, I love my clones. I'm so excited that, that Rex is out there. And, yes, I did get my, my arcs. Um, and I know there's a lot of people out there that didn't. I still don't have all the Phase 2s I want. I don't have vital, is it vital assets we don't have? I think yep. it's vital assets. Our store actually even, didn't get vital assets yet, and we have not even seen those. A couple of guys from Fort Wayne, when they come up and play, they get to Saturday? bring them. I think they are. I hope so. I'm really my sure wallet. My wallet hopes it's not, but I hope it is. What were you asking? I thought you were asking if people were coming from Fort Wayne and bringing vital assets. We're not going to have oh, vital I, assets, no. Oh, but oh, you are going to have a couple arcs because I. Oh, well, I guess that's it. some money that I can put towards something else. Yes. Yeah. About- 
Yeah, I, I guess I, I'm trying to think of what to say without being kind of a douchebag about it. It's a game, and trust me, dude, <laughs> I, I I I love this game. I love this game. It's all I talk. My wife hates this game with a passion because it's all I talk about. Um, my my front room is just a paint factory. Um, I my chair, which was my father's, uh, rest his soul, is one of the arms on it is just it looks like Sabine's boots because nice. I just wiped the paint off on it. And, you know, I love this game better than anything. I spend a lot of time with it and running, you know, our community here. But this toxicity has got to quit. You know, it, it's, it's a game. They're, they're, it's not helping. It's just making people look bad. It's making us look like, like other gaming communities that gets toxic every once in a while. Just play the game. Play with what you got. You know, learn easier, better ways. You know, pick a different faction if, if you can't get, you know, clones or droids or whatever. I'm sure you have rebels. I'm sure you have Imperials. Play some characters you don't. I honestly, I've had Palpatine and Vader since, you know, they came out. I've never played Palpatine. I, I got an, uh, an operative Vader the other day. I put a four-man team for a skirmish together with two naked stormtroopers and I had more fun playing that than I, I had playing clones because I'd playing my clones all the time. So just pick something weird that you never played. Ben's really good at playing weird stuff you know, and he has a good time with it. Even if he doesn't win all the time, he has a good time and that's the, the essence of the game. Have a good time. Don't be a competitive you know, butthead. It's, it's fine to be competitive, but you know what? It's a game. Have fun. They're plastic men. You get to push them out. You get to go be a kid once a month or twice a month. And I know the COVID thing has slowed that down, but you know what? We're all going through it. Get over it. And they'll get the games to us when it, when, when they get them in, and we'll all have fun with it. And I'm done. Sorry. That was well put. Yeah. Every it's, word. Well it's put. just irritating sometimes. I actually saw somebody that, that very, very, very rarely cusses go into a, a, a F-bomb bit about people and and people being mad and peeved off and it's like like okay they push that guy over the line he never goes over the line i've seen i've known him for probably three years and i've seen him this is the second time in the whole existence of of talking to him that i've ever seen him drop an f-bomb and it's just like oh oh god they've driven him to that how how bad can this be you know so all right well that psa out of the way let's briefly touch on Hobbying. Bob, I know you love your 501st. Have you been painting? Are you going to paint up all your ARC troopers uh, no. in the 501st fashion? No. I'm going to take one ARC unit, and they're going to all be blues in different different variations. Of course, five's got very distinctive armor. Um, I've even taken... They got the uh, the commies wrong on them. They actually put skirts on them, like Rex's skirt. Um, they actually... The clone troopers, if you look at pictures... Or the, the ARC troopers, if you looked at them, they basically just had side armor um the 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 skirt the the commies on each side then they have full full skirts on them on on these models so i had to figure out on fives how to get the 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 w's basically he's got blue w's painted on his so i figured out how to do that and they look kind of cool um eventually i'll put them online to where you can see it and uh like i said getting that five painted on his head is going to be just atrociously hard. That's the only one I've honestly got painted. Um, I've looked at the at the the jump racks, the the, the stands, yep. and I think they're going to be very cool. The rest of it, they're they're a challenge to put together. So make sure you look at the pictures. Um, there's one the leg. You have to put it inside the the body thing and then put the the body together. Else you'll have a really good hard time trying to get that put together. Um, again, look, Chris, at, look at you. I was going to say, look at you, Chris Zinga. Yep, Chris doing Zinga, the hard work. Go doing the hard work and saving everyone the trouble later. It is. He's, he's amazingly cool. Really nice guy. <laughs> beautiful human being. He, he, he does a lot of good work um, inside the community and out. He's kind of our cheerleader um, of, of one of our groups that we get into. He's, he's, he's a good guy. Oh, love he is. I, I love him. We'll have to have him on at some point. Yeah, we'll, we'll get him in there. But hobby and... Uh, so, cool no, no, no. Is, what, I was, what I was asking was, are you doing 501st for all your art? Oh, yeah, 501st stuff. No, I'm only going to do that for one. I found a couple of pictures of some red troopers. Um, oh. Again, back back to Chris. He's painted some really nice ones. He's got some dark green ones that actually look like they've been out in the mud. Dude, he's got you so know? many different painted arcs already. I was like, wow, man. He's really been put to work on this so fast. Yeah. And these look really good. I've They're seen nice. some really good ones in the community. Man, I really want to like, I really want to highlight those, and I, I'm stupid for not have not having done that before the show. But 
uh, maybe uh, maybe we can touch it on the next. We'll, we'll throw like, that in when we're talking episode about something. Minute, so. But I know yeah. I saw like what was it Hurricane or something is one of like the coolest ones I've seen. It was some guy's uh, custom clone that he made. It was like purple, which you know that's my favorite yeah, color. That's your that's your thing. Yep. Uh, he was like, and he said he was like a uh, an arc under Mace Windu, and I loved all the character backstory and everything that was getting put into it, and the model looked beautiful, and the paint job was beautiful. And there was some, I've seen some guy who's been painting them like one at a time in this, like this really cool black with this white edge highlighting that looks super dope. Those have been really cool. Yeah. And everyone's doing an amazing job so far on these arcs. And uh, people are going out and get, what is it? Umbra? They're doing the black. Yeah. yeah, yeah, Doing that. And I I was thinking about doing that for some, and I'm just like, man, everyone's doing such a good job on that. It's a lot of work, but yeah, that's, that's the other thing about this game. All the pieces are so cool. You know, people take their time and make them look really, really, really good. You know, you see just awesome stuff on the tables when we go, we've got some really good painters at the store and it's always amazing to see people bring stuff in. And, um, Brendan from up in Fort Wayne at power, power. Nine, oh, I, I cannot is. wait to see his, his, they're going to be stupid. Amazing. Cause uh, he makes actually a battlefield when he brings them in. Yeah. They're, they're on a, on a scene. It's, it's just like a little diorama. Uh, yeah. It's like a little diorama and it, it's just great work. He's amazingly cool. Um, just up there. Power nines is trying to get their games together up there and, uh, they come down and play at our store. So, all right. So you got blue squad, you got red squad. Let me guess. Are you going to have an all white shiny squad? No, I, I, I right. they're arcs, so there wouldn't they're be. They're arcs, yeah, so they're spot. not shiny, but, you know, they could be. I guess you could do yeah. that. I don't, I don't think I'm going to do that. I might do a, that orange color that I do everything in. I, I've got a squad of orange. Oh, my, so like, my, my like whole thing, vault or something? Kind, kind of like uh, 212 two, yeah, kind of like 212, uh, but okay. mine's a little bit darker than theirs. Again, yeah, I like. Fine. I you like, like the darker colors paint. in general, so. Yeah, so basically, my arcs. My arcs, I've got, I've got a, a, a whole squad of phase ones that are, are the named characters from, from the cartoon. Yep. I've got them all in the squad and uh, phase twos. So, yep. the, so yeah, I'm going to take the arcs, as many blue arcs that I can find or something close. And I'll probably just do the whole squad up in blues. And if I can't find anything, I'll just put the 501st, uh, that, that kind of arrowhead thing that they yeah, put yeah. And do those up, but like I said, the other ones, I I don't know what I'm going to do with them. Um, it's really cool because you, if you buy two sets, you're going to get two two snipers. Um, they put a yep. Jesse head in there. Yeah, they did. I saw that. I'm probably going to tackle head. that. So I'm, I'm going to tackle that because he was an arc in the final season. So yeah, so I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to do homage to that. I'm I'm going to do him up. Uh, so those three will be blue for sure, and then we'll go from there on on what we do with. I'm going to put him with two pistols because that seemed to be his jam, and. Yeah. Uh, I think I might do some reds. I might do a couple of red ones. Maybe do a, a Fordo in face with a face two helmet. Huh? Okay. So, yeah, that would be cool. Because that second season of that that cartoon, he was running around. Yeah, yeah. he was phase two. Yeah. So, Pretty sweet. I don't know. There's a whole bunch. What are you going to do with yours? Well, gonna- since I've got two boxes, yeah. I'm going to do. I'm actually going to do. You'll be happy to know. I'm also going to do a five of first squad because I want to do fives. I want to have a fives and an echo mini. And I figure if I'm going to do that, I might as well go all out and make some 501st arcs. And so I'll probably do a first squad of 501st. And then my second squad is going to be... And, I, and I'm probably going to put them all on the ground. I'm probably not going to flight stand any of them. Because I really want those flight stands just to have them for other models. <laughs> There's uh, a really cool one of somebody put put one running over a rock. He's got one Yeah, I'm probably going to do stuff over. like that. I've seen some really cool stuff. People are, like, modding them on the ground, like, over rocks and with tree stumps and stuff. I was like, man, these are so cool and inspiring. And I, But I want to use these flight stands for other models. I saw somebody did it with R2-D2 and yes. put him up on a flight stand. I'm like, that's the coolest thing I've ever seen. That was amazingly <laughs> that was awesome. cool. That was And great. I have... I have a plan of a model that I would like to put up on a flight stand. One model that I secretly have a whole warehouse full of, but I won't tell you is that, about is, it. Is, is, is that a girl with with, with a, a helmet from some what? warrior class? Maybe. No, yes. but that's not a bad idea. I might also Karen, do Karen, something like that. Karen, yeah. I was talking about my other favorite Mandalorian female, Cad Bane. Cad Bane would be awesome. I would yeah, love to see I'm, somebody. I'm, take I'm him. probably going to do. I'm probably going to do a Jet Boots Cad Bane, and he's probably going to get a flight stand. So, yeah. so being there, you go. One, though. Here you to first. One, yeah, you know what? I might. That's that's 
a really good idea, and I don't know why I didn't think of it before now. I will have to do another Sabine on a That's flight. That's because I love her more than you love her, so there you, you go. You take that back. Actually, you don't even <laughs> take it back. I'll just edit it out of the episode. There you go. Yeah. Anyway, so we have uh, that squad, and then I have another squad. And as you know, I have my own custom purple unit of clones. But known you only as, have two boxes. Known as the 269th. And those proud boys are going to get some ARC troopers. That's the cool thing with them. You can you can change all the colors because they don't all have to be the same. Because like I said, they were right. usually a unit that was added to to a group of, of, of troopers. So uh, I don't think I've ever seen like a group of, of ARC troopers that were out there. Right. Everybody was an ARC. So one box is going to be the 501st, and he's going to and it's going to get the proper fives and the proper echo, just so I have those and I can say, "Cool, I got the." Are you going to do helmets or faces? For those ones, I'm going to do the faces of fives, echo, and Jesse. Okay, cool. And then the other squad, I have, I'm going to do purple, and all those are going to be helmeted. And two of them in particular are going to be homages to characters that uh, some buddies and I are playing. We we haven't. Uh, I don't know if you're familiar with the the game Arma Three. But it is an online game that is a shooter that is very open, open source and stand and sandboxy. Uh, so it's a big playing field that you can do a lot in. And so many people have gone into excruciating detail to make these amazing Star Wars mods. And so you can join these like clone platoons of people gathering together online and making like full regimes of clones. And it's that super awesome. awesome. And what we're doing instead is just me and a couple buddies have gotten together, and my buddy is running a Zeus mode thing for us, which is a fancy term for basically saying he's making like a and d kind of style world where we're playing a shooter video game, and he's pulling the strings and making things happen. So we've done stuff like... So he has a whole campaign set out that's happening real time. He's got clones that are... Like AI clones that are going over here, AI droids that are going over here, and then there's us who are actual real players who are going in and changing the course of this battle i've got clones that i'm commanding i'm i'm the commander uh, i've got clones that i'm that i'm commanding and i've got people running around and stuff and it's really really awesome and it's written re- like when we all get into it and we like can do the voices and stuff we're getting like really immersed into into how how it would be to be a real clone trooper in these scenarios and it's really fun so i'm gonna paint one of my i'm gonna paint my character from that as one of those arcs and he's going to be up on a jetpack because I think that's awesome. the coolest thing. Jetpack, two pistols, and whew, just so pretty. And They're going to be nice. Yeah. yeah, and then my buddy uh, in our squad, he's our sniper. So I'm going to take the Echo model, and I'm going to give him the sniper, and I'm going to give him a helmet, and I'm going to paint both of their armors up the way that they're painted up in, like, our characters have them. And then the rest of them are just going to be 269th arcs. And then I got another buddy who, his he's the medic. So I'm going to wait until the specialists come out in January and I'll paint him up. Yep. But yeah, so I am so so I'm uh Captain Shadow. And then we've got uh, my buddy the sniper is uh he he is Raven. And then you've got uh and then you've got our doctor, our medic. Uh his name is Patches. It's very fun. It's very, it's a very fun thing to do, and I cannot wait to bring it to life with the models because that's something I've loved to do with Legion. Is like, hey, I have this character that I've played in a Star Wars role playing thing or that I made for something, and now I can paint a figure like that. And we've been, and we've been loving to do it with clones, and we've done it with like I did it with Jin, and we painted her up like a different character, and it was super fun. And it, I'm so glad that you can do that kind of stuff with Legion. Very cool. Yep, that's that's what it's there for. That's where everybody needs to focus their attention and not not screaming and yelling about what we got and what we don't. Agreed. Well, very we'll cool, keep, sir. We'll keep reminding everybody of that note every time it has to happen. Exactly. All right, Bob. This is the longest episode we've ever done. Congratulations! Woo! The Woo. oh, actually, as I look around, I I'm just realizing that everyone's left, and the bartender hasn't kicked us out yet. Hey, hey, hey sorry, hey. sorry, man. We're leaving. Yeah. We're, we're out of here. Thank you. Thank you for letting us stay here. Bob, will you leave a tip? I don't have any money. Uh, 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 Bob, leave sure. a tip. I don't have any money. Yeah, I, I can do it. You ready? Yeah, I'm ready to go. Okay, let's run. Run, 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 run. Oh, oh no. Oh, crap. <laughs> that was close. Okay. That was not what I expected. That fat guy can run like crazy.
wait a minute, that was me. Um, that fat bat bartender can run like crazy. We might have bounties on our heads now. Oh, great. Okay, can't wait for that. All right, we need to. All right, we need to go radio silent. Let's get back to the ship. Yep. I guess for now. I hope everyone had a dice time with us today. Everybody had a dice time. Uh, good luck to everybody. Uh, stay safe and uh, stay well. And we'll talk to you when we talk to you. We might do another bonus episode. We seem to be good at that. So we'll talk to you when we talk to you. Go out and make today even better, y'all. See ya. <laughs>